After adding lighting to my custom desk, I was excited to program controls for the colors and effects. This feature only works for Razer Synapse 3 enabled device inputs. Ah, uh, so I need like a Razer keyboard. Man, that's really disappointing. Just because Razer said I have to buy one of their keyboards to control RGB shortcuts, doesn't mean I'm going to buy one of their keyboards to control RGB shortcuts. Let's go, I freaking did it. Okay, I'm going to get you up to speed in case you missed the previous project videos. When building my dream custom desk, I wired my LED strips to the Razer Chroma controller. This gave simple drag and drop arrangements for programming cool effects, but it also had game integrations. Each supported game did something different. Some were seizure inducing, so skip the next 10 seconds if that's an issue for you. It's just a flashback. See, I'm not kidding. Absolute madness. But the best part is the desk turning red when I take damage. <laughs> Dude, the red. When not playing games, I wanted to change color and brightness easily because I use the desk as a backdrop when filming my videos. So I bought a Stream Deck Plus. This device allows you to customize its buttons to control almost anything on your computer until I realized that Razer Synapse, the software which controls the Razer controller, doesn't allow keyboard shortcuts for RGB control from non-Razer devices. I honestly still can't believe it. Like if I go into Razer Synapse, click global shortcuts and add a shortcut, I can select to change the lighting to something like Rainbow Wave and enter the shortcut key on my keyboard. And then if I like do that shortcut, nothing happens. If I go into the Stream Deck software, I can make a new hotkey and set the exact same combo, press that button, nothing happens. Having controls for everything that's built into the desk, except for lighting, is really annoying. So the last time we spoke, your suggestions were to replace the Razer Chroma controller with something open source, like a microcontroller running WLED. However, that requires a Signal RGB subscription to have the lights react to games. Then I saw a couple comments that were a different idea I had. Create a fake game that sends those Razer gaming API commands and that will then change the color in Synapse. And I was literally going to do this until I realized that if I press Control shift a Alexa appears from Razer Synapse. Now, the irony here is that I just did a keyboard shortcut mm. on a non-Razer keyboard and had something happen in Razer Synapse. It's blatantly obvious that Razer Synapse can use a keyboard shortcut from any keyboard. But let's focus on a potential loophole, Alexa. See, there's a bunch of skills. So I can say to Alexa, ask Razer to turn off chroma lighting. Okay, set chroma lighting to off. Voice assistants can be handy, but I prefer physical buttons if possible. So can I make a button on the Stream Deck make Alexa tell Synapse to change the lighting? Since buying my Stream Deck Plus and mounting it into the desk, I've become more familiar with just how incredibly powerful it can be. Like, I'm still discovering new integrations in the marketplace, which are add-ons for specific programs or services, but there were none for Alexa. And so I started looking at developing one myself. On topic of making things, today's sponsor PCBWay are celebrating their 10th anniversary. Until the end of August, you can access exclusive coupons to use in your custom PCB, CNC, sheet metal, or even 3D printing jobs by simply uploading your file, getting a quote, adding a discount, then having your parts made and shipped to you. Big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. Now, sometimes I need to take a step back, yeah, and reevaluate the path that I'm on because I've gone from making a fake game to now making a full blown fake smart device. And I realized I'd never Googled. Like, has anyone just made the Stream Deck control Alexa before? Sure enough, I've got a hit, Voice Monkey, which has a tagline of supercharge your Alexa routines. Take one guess what this website does. Yeah, it allows me to make fake smart device buttons. And once linked to my Amazon account, it appears in Alexa as a doorbell. Like it seriously just thinks I've got a bunch of doorbells now. Now in the Alexa app, I can create a routine where if the fake doorbell button is pressed, then Alexa will command a smart device, in this case, Razer Chroma, to either change brightness or change its color to one of the predetermined options. The list of colors I can pick in the Alexa app are great. Yeah, we can control the desk to turn any solid color pretty much. But ideally the cherry on top would be Chroma Studio 
where I can use animations. And these animations can react to music. I found if I used my voice, I could use an effect created in Chroma Studio. Tell Razer to set Chroma lighting to Chroma Studio effect 2. Alright, this is the rainbow one. Okay, switching to Chroma effect 2. Yes, okay, good, thank you. The problem is, when I made an Alexa routine to trigger the voice command, it required a real device to play back a response. Being a Google household, I've got the home and different Nest routers, but no Alexa speakers. And so if the Alexa app isn't open on my Android phone, it just pauses the routine until the next time I open it. Okay, switching to Chroma Effect 2. Look, it is annoying that a virtually spoken instruction requires a real physical speaker response, especially when the instruction doesn't need a response. So if you know a way to do that without buying an Echo speaker, let me know in the comments below. But at least now, I can control brightness and colors with a button. But how does that button work? Well, in VoiceMonkey, when I created the fake buttons, it also generated webhooks. Now, these are unique URLs, which when requested from their server, trigger the virtual button to be pressed. Remember how I said this Stream Deck is surprisingly powerful? Not only can you make a button open a website, but you can make it a GET request. This way, when you press the button, it doesn't open the website, it just sends a request to the server for it. And so these buttons are a bunch of webhook links. When one is pressed, a website GET request is sent to the VoiceMonkey server. This matches the URL to the virtual button and then tells Alexa which virtual button was pressed. That then triggers the Alexa routine. So Alexa tells Razer to change to one of the predetermined colors or brightness levels that I've set. As a customer, having ecosystem limitations, such as you need to buy our keyboard to do RGB shortcuts, but we'll let you use any keyboard to activate an assistant in the same app, makes me want to buy no more products. Set chroma lighting to breathing green. I don't know how to set chroma lighting to that setting. Well, oh, I don't even know, bro. I don't even know. Because I can make it go white and blue. Hopefully one day the restriction is lifted. Until then, I've got a button to tell Alexa, to tell Razer what to do. If you liked today's video, thumbs it. If you want to see the tutorials that I followed, I'll link them down below. And if you commented on my custom PC build that I need to try Bambu Lab 3D printers, all I can say for now is subscribe. Bye.